Lieutenant Hadar Golden was 23 when he fell in action during the 2014 Israel-Gaza war, but while the war ended, the fight for Hadar's family did not. Israel Beitenu Knesset member Oded Forer has been dedicating his efforts to securing the release of Golden's body from Hamas for burial, and the lawmaker joins us in the studio today. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. All right, so my first question is kind of how did we get to this situation where we have to fight for this, for Hadar Golden's body? I, I think, unfortunately, that uh, people are always talking only about Hadar Goldin, but we need to remember there is Oron Shaul's body. There are two Israeli citizens alive that are now captured in the Hamas. Um, Avera Mangisto, which is an Ethiopian citizen, an yeah. Israeli citizen, and, and, uh, some, and an Arab Israeli citizen. Yeah. All of them are kept in Hamas now, and they are trying to negotiate or, or wanting to negotiate with us in order to release their prisoners which are sentenced for many, many uh, decades because of the crimes that they did and the mm -hmm. terrorist attacks they did. And uh, I think that they think, because of other uh, actions that we have done before, that they can get a, a good deal with uh, Israel in order to get back Hadar Goldin's body and all the others. This is an unfortunate situ situation and we need to change it. So now, uh, staying on the subject, I know Hadar Golden has been held since 2014, since, yes. since he passed away during the war. But, you know, these other, these other people who are, first of all, still alive, as you said, how long have they been in captivity? Uh, approximately also between this time uh, they got into the to Gaza Strip. They, the, the citizen that got uh, to, to Gaza Strip got there uh, alone. The, mm -hmm. It's a sad story. We don't yeah. need to, to talk about it, but still, there are Israeli citizens which are captured now in Hamas uh, under uh, uh, captivity, and we need to get them out of there. We need to get them and bring them back home. So how, what is your plan that you're proposing to do that? I think that first of all, we need to, to make a different uh, 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 deal with the terrorists that we are, we are now have, have them in our prisons. Because when I looked at the terms that the uh, Arab uh, terrorist citizens or Arab terrorists which are yeah. now uh, in uh, prison in Israel, uh, they got do good uh, terms. They have TV, they have a party over there, they can uh, vote for themselves and, and to uh, choose the speaker and many, many other terms that I don't know if the people that are captured in Hamas have even a little bit of those terms. We need to uh, make their terms in the Israeli uh, prison much tougher. So which, so which kind of conditions would you try to eliminate? I, I want to eliminate the, the, uh, all the conditions that we are not have to give them in, by uh, the Geneva uh, Agreement. Right. What we have to give them, we will give them. But I don't need to give them money in order they can buy uh, cigarettes or uh, some uh, yeah. uh, things in, in, the, in the prison. I need only to give them what I have to give them, not more. I don't need to let their families to visit them. Because now what we need to understand, many families from Gaza Strip in buses are coming to Israel and visiting the prisoners that are now in our uh, prison. And we have no information about Hadar Golding's body and about Oron Shaul's body, and of course about the two Israeli citizens which are in capture of them. So do you, do you not think that enough is being done? I mean, you know, Prime Minister Netanyahu is supposedly doing all that he can to get Hadar Golden and the others back. I'm sure that he's doing all, all that he can, but uh, sometimes the government needs some help from the Knesset, from the legislative. I so I just proposed a, a bill that will uh, deny all the rights that the prisoners, the, the terrorist prisoners in the Israeli uh, prison have and I think that this will help our uh, decision maker, makers to get a, a much cooler decision in order to get a good deal uh, and to bring back our sons from prisons. So that actually brings me right into the next question. Uh, you know, Hamas is, can be characterized as Israel's arch enemy, or one of them anyway. You know, it's in their charter that they want to destroy us. They're not interested in a two-state solution. How can we, how can Israel trust in any negotiated deal or settlement that, that they've come up with when historically they've broken them all? First of all, I, I don't want to do the deal with Hamas and I have no negotiating with Hamas. But eventually I want to bring our uh, boys back home. And in order to do that, I need someone that is uh, in order to, to make some agreements uh, which are um, 
not negotiating with uh, Hamas, sometimes with Egypt, sometimes maybe with the leadership of United okay. States or other leaderships around the world. We need to find the point of contact that I can close a deal with it and bring back our homes. They need to understand that they can't uh, have humanitarian uh, solution and humanitarian uh, drugs and food which are now entered into Gaza Strip without giving us any information about our sons. So, I mean, and yeah, you know, we have, not to mention, you said we have Israeli tax, tax dollars and shekels that are going into these prisons to fund for cigarettes and education, publicly funded, things like that, you know, but they also have Hamas given uh, uh, salaries for, for having committed the terror acts in the first place. Uh, this, of course, something that we need to prevent, and we need to prevent not only Hamas, the Palestinian Authority, yeah. Abu Mazen himself, is paying to Palestinian prisoners in Israel prison, and you have a price list, how much you get for uh, murdering an Israeli, how much you get only for injuring. You just have a, a price list, and we need to start hitting them where it hurts for them. And it hurts for them when, the, when we are now making much tougher for the prisoners in the Israeli prison. And then just, just to be clear, so you, you know, aside from making their conditions tougher, you were just earlier talking about, you know, getting some outside influences to aid in putting pressure on Hamas the, there in is, Gaza and the Palestinians. There are many goods that are entering into Gaza Strip, many goods of construction and food and drugs, of course. And I want the, the world to understand the uh, international community to understand that this is a humanitarian situation. The fact that they are holding our boys, that they are holding bodies of two of our boys and they're holding citizens, Israeli citizens in, in capture, this is a humanitarian uh, issue. And as much as they are worrying about us to bring them drugs and food and humanitarian aid, we need, to, we need them to take care of our humanitarian needs, and this is one of my humanitarian important needs. So what, so what do you say to the fact that, you know, on average, the Palestinians are, first of all, three, four generations off are receiving refugee status, as well as, you know, per capita, way more aid, foreign aid, than anyone else on Earth? I think that this situation that the UN uh, actually decides on uh, is one of the effect that making it tougher to get to a deal and to a solution of this conflict. Because they all the time, they know that the international community will give them help and will give them help for three or four generations, which is nothing, which is no close even to what other refugees are getting around the world. You can't have refugees for three or four generations. Because if they are there for That's, four generations, they are not refugees anymore. Right. So I think that we need to uh, say and, and put a border over here and say, stop now. You want humanitarian help for, for Gaza Strip, we need humanitarian help for our boys. Okay, so uh, I would like to change topics a little bit now. Uh, recently, we had the Israeli state comptroller release a, uh, a report about the alleged mishandling of information regarding the tunnels during the 2014 war where Hadal Golden was taken. Um, you know, First of all, have you heard about the report? Have you read the report? And what are what are your criticisms of that? First of all, I haven't read the report, which is now okay. is still a secret. This uh, report we haven't got it uh, yet. Of course, the media is uh, promoting a few headlines from this report. I can say tell you this, and I'm sure about this. I'm sure that our government did all that it can do in order to uh, make our um, army prepared to what it needs to do. Of course, I think, and we thought that also during the war, that this war against, against uh, Hamas was taking too long. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the right decision, which was the decision to, uh, um, to get in, into Gaza Strip and to stop Hamas ruling in the Gaza Strip. It took us too long. It took us too long. 51 days of war is too long. And of course, in 51 days of war, there are many mistakes are being yeah, done. Yeah. I haven't read the report. But I'm sure yet that our leadership has done all that it can, they could do in order to uh, finish this and uh, to, to solve this problem. All right, well, thank you so much for coming in. It was very insightful. Thank you. Thank you very I much. I appreciate thank it Thank you for much. inviting me. All right.